So today's video is kind of a challenge video. Um, I wanted to see if I could build a speaker that could drive a uh, metronome and be as loud and as powerful as some of the name brand options out there. Uh, this would be mainly used for like a marching band or a PA system, something like that. Um, this isn't something that you would put on your piano and use mostly marching band applications. But I wanted to see if I could build it and build it for cheaper than what uh, a lot of the name brand options out there are. So let's take a look at some of the pieces, the three main pieces that we have for the project. Uh, the first piece is going to be the speaker. And this is just a 40 watt speaker that I got off the internet. And um, it's got a nice little bass on it. And this is our amplifier board that we're going to use to amplify the signal and send it to the speaker and then just a generic enclosure box that i got at my local electronics store uh, you can basically enclose this in anything you want and of course a battery to run the entire thing uh, this is a 12 volt i think four and a half amp hour battery let's talk a little more about the amplifier because it's the most complicated and most important part of this piece it is a kit that i got from adafruit and I'll put links in the description below of where I got all the parts. Uh, it has a terminal block here for uh, battery power that will come in and drive the speaker. This is where the speaker hooks up to. There's a left and right speaker option. We're only going to use one of them for this project. On the left hand side you can see this secondary audio in. I just soldered up a uh, audio jack that is gonna be connected to the enclosure and that's where you'll plug in the metronome. I didn't want the board sitting flush up against the enclosure so that's why I just made this little extension. This is an analog volume control. It actually controls the gain on the board and you can control it digitally or analog. This is the analog option so we're gonna have a little button on the outside, a knob, that we can turn this potentiometer with and that'll increase or decrease uh, the volume. You can buy a uh, already assembled board, but uh, this was the option that I felt comfortable with. I've bought things from Adafruit before and they've worked great, but there are plenty of amplifier board options. Uh, if you go looking for them, there's a lot of like home stereo options and it just has to be something that can drive your speaker. So the first thing is to get the speaker attached to the enclosure. Uh, what I'm doing here is trying to line it up to where it doesn't uh, hit the enclosure. So the speaker will hang over a little bit from the enclosure and I'm just marking that on the back. And then I'm going and making sure that it's centered uh, just the same distance on both sides. And since it has a detachable base, I'm going to take that off, take the lid off the enclosure so that I can mark where the three holes need to be drilled in order to attach this to the enclosure. I'm going to take a spare piece of plywood as backing and go ahead and drill those holes for the base plate. And now I'm just testing the hardware that I got, uh, just some nuts and bolts from the local hardware store um, to attach this to the enclosure. And there it is. That will be uh, the base plate for our speaker. The next thing to do is to find the center in between these three holes because the speaker wires need to enter the enclosure and I figured the safest place for that was gonna be um, just feeding it underneath the base and into the enclosure from there. So now I'm gonna drill a larger hole for the speaker wires to go into the enclosure. And 
And again, making sure that there's enough clearance for the wires and um, that the base plate fits. And there it is. Uh, we pulled the wires through the larger hole and we attached the speaker back to its base and that part's done. Next thing we gotta worry about is the battery. Um, it's a fairly large battery. It's a sealed lead acid battery and I don't want it moving around too much inside the enclosure and uh, since it's got some room uh, to wiggle around, I'm just gonna put some screws with spacers around it to keep it from moving around too much inside the enclosure. So with those spots marked, again, I'm gonna use the plywood as a backing and drill out the three holes that are going to hold the battery in place. And now I'm gonna put the amplifier board on a set of spacers so it's not uh, sitting on the bottom of the enclosure, it's not up against one of the walls of the enclosure, it's just gonna be lifted up slightly so that it's a little easier to get to all of the inputs, outputs, and terminals and being able to screw in the wires and unscrew the wires. So I've just kind of centered it near the back of the enclosure and uh, going to drill four small holes for the standoffs. And now the two parts that are gonna exit out through the enclosure are the audio jack and the knob that we have for volume control. And I'm just kind of marking off uh, the backside of the enclosure where I kind of want them to go before I drill the holes for them. And then I'm just using the knob to kind of see where, um, where I want to place those holes. So here it is. We have uh, two holes in the back and then one on the side for a power button. Uh, we're going to put little uh, feet that came with the enclosure on the bottom. And these are just little rubber feet that'll keep it off the uh, whatever surface it's sitting on since that speaker outputs quite a bit. Um, vibration and shaking could be an issue if you didn't kind of put it on some rubber feet. So this was nice. Uh, it just screws in, it's got a lock washer and a nut on the inside. There we go. Now we're going to add in the standoffs for the battery. Uh, so this will kind of hold the battery in place so it doesn't move around inside the enclosure and hit the amplifier board or uh, mess around with any of the wires. And these are just nylon standoffs with a uh, screw and a nut to hold it in place. Uh, I'm just going to tighten those down a little bit so that they don't um, move around. Next, we're going to put in the amplifier board itself. So these screws go through the amplifier board onto some nylon standoffs and through the enclosure to the other side. And that's where we'll put the bolts for them. So this is just putting it into those uh, pre drilled holes that I had. And then you can see the, the screw sticking out of the bottom. There's a couple of uh, 
small nuts that go over those screws and help hold it in place. There we go. Now our board's in place. Uh, next thing we want to do is the audio jack to the outside. Just get a little um, screw on the outside. This is the knob for the volume control on the outside. It just has a little washer and nut that go on the outside for that. And then here's the power button. Uh, it's just a press fit rocker switch power button that will uh, turn the power on, turn the power off. And then this is connecting the power to the board from the switch. Putting our battery in place, connecting the battery up to the board and the switch. And here's that back piece. Here's the power switch. I didn't have a lot of time to do wire management on this. I think if I wanted a more permanent solution, I would uh, make sure that it was fully enclosed and the wires were actually cut to size. Uh, none of those extra wires sitting around in there. And the last piece is to just put the lid on. Uh, this enclosure had a screw top lid. Again, um, maybe not something for a permanent solution. Um, I would like to have at least access to the battery. And then here's the knob for the volume control. It's got a little set screw on it, so all I have to do is place it over the potentiometer and then screw it down. And that's it. Uh, it's time to hook everything up and test it out. Um, all you need is an audio cable and a metronome. So here's a nice secluded parking lot that I found where I could test this out. I think it goes without saying if you play piccolo or if you're going to be standing in front of one of these things, uh, wear hearing protection. There it is. Um, I had a little, um, I forget what it's called, but it measures uh, decibel output, uh, just a little app on my phone, and it was putting out about uh, 90 decibels. So how did we do overall? Well, name brand solutions for things like this output about, um, 115 decibels um, so we got up to about 90 which is great um, more than enough all the parts put together it only came up to about a hundred dollars for this entire setup if you only need something like this it's very doable for someone who um, has you know just general knowledge of electronics and uh, doesn't want to spend that much on a bells and whistle system. Thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and uh, check out some of the other videos. Uh, give this a like if you like and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.